Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Glitter and Lasers. And if you have been on this channel for the last two weeks, well, since January, basically, you will know that I am co-opting a term called dark anthropology. And basically, I'm going to be looking at the anthropology of manipulation and uh well manipulation and all the fun things that go along with it the darker aspects of humanity via youtube because why not i don't know if anna necessarily needs to be examined with such a dark lens i kind of kind of well i kind of created the idea around amber lynn if you follow the Amberlynn drama recently, you'll understand why. If you don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe you should just stay ignorant. It's okay. It's, you know, you don't need to know about everything in life. But there are some things in this most recent Glitter and Lasers video that I kind of want to talk about through that same dark lens. And I didn't realize how, like, I just jumped into this video. And I apologize for that. I have had a migraine since 3 p.m. this afternoon. And it is roughly 6 o'clock now. 6.30. So I'm uh, I, I'm one of those people that after I have the migraine, I go through a phase of euphoria. Which is just a way of saying that I'm super hyper, super hyper and all of the things you don't like to be. But everyone's like, wow, you're in such a great mood. And it's like, I'm really not though. But anyway, if you get, if you also get like, I think it's very common with ocular migraines. So if you're also an ocular migraine kind of person, you will understand what I'm talking about. Probably. I'm pretty sure you can have it with other forms of migraines. These are just the ones I have. So that being said, uh, that's why we have a different pair of smarty glasses on today. And also why I look kind of rough because I was going to do makeup, but then I was just like, fuck it, I'm doing this. So we're doing this anyway preamble aside thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel we hit 3,000 we're over 3,000 now but not by a whole lot but so so it's not like I missed my mark or anything this is just the first video I've made since we hit 3,000 thank you to everybody who has subscribed I truly appreciate it it is I don't know man it's it's exciting to watch the number go up now I'm just kind of like Ooh. um I feel like if the number started going down I would probably be disappointed so kind of a situation uh so again thank you everybody who's been supporting the channel uh, especially people who are supporting us into the new year thank you to all of my subscribers thank you to my members thank you to the couple of you that have sent me like tips on um paypal i just wanted to say thank you publicly for that because uh when you send when you do super thanks and that kind of stuff on youtube it kind of makes it public uh but this way through the paypal it's not as much but i do want you to know that i truly appreciate it and i want everyone else to know that i appreciate you as well so there's that um anything else i need to say before we get started i am an anthropologist by training i am a retired archaeologist i don't think i've said that in a while so there's that and yeah i'm fidgeting here now i promise so this is Anna's second video of 2024. This is my results after 100 strength workouts. It's very... Here's... Okay. Anna is very curated online. And I've always said there's not a problem with that. Anna has a brand. Anna has a vision for that brand. So curating that brand online is not unusual or a bad idea, honestly. It's a good business move. That being said, it is very interesting that she specifically says 100 strength workouts versus just workouts, which I think is what she titled this the last time she did one of these videos, or something like mobility workouts, or what else can you do? Flexibility workouts kind of a thing. So she's very narrow, narrowly defining her workouts here. So later, when she starts to receive criticisms, which she will, because Chikara Transformations has not gotten a hold of this one yet. Darn it. But when she starts to get criticisms for this, she can be like, well, X, Y, Z, I said strength workouts, yada, 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 kind of a thing. So anyway. And that does go into part of the lens of the dark 
anthropology and I just like saying it so there the whole um controlling of a narrative uh, specifically the the conversation between the creator and the community unlike amber who has like this parasocial relationship with her audience anna does not seem to i'm not saying anna doesn't care about her audience i i don't i don't think she does or doesn't i think anna sees her audience as her clients if you will and so she sees us as the consumers of her product and i don't think she particularly has too much of an opinion of us one way or the other and again that's not a bad thing i'm not saying that's a bad thing however in part of controlling her narrative about her brand which is about her uh she has to spin things a certain way and she has to have very tight control over the conversation that's being had around her and her brand and this is one of those things that she's doing I've already watched this one once and there's a couple little things in here that are actually kind of surprising to me that she actually comes out and says and I think that's because she has finally decided to address the backlash that she's been receiving and I don't want to spoil it you guys but we'll get to it when we get to it I have sped her up to time and a quarter I've tried speeding her up more than that she talks too fast of all of the girls Anna talks too fast sometimes so I don't know there you go all right let's get into this Happy New Year, everybody. Hi. I know that it is now 2024 and Whoa. so many of you are starting new resolutions, new traditions, or just decided that this is your time to get active. So Anna's first video was new me, new year, new me, 2024, question mark, where she basically spends, I don't know, 20 minutes, almost like almost a half hour, not saying anything and just talking in a big giant circle. And many people pointed out in the comment section of that video that she is setting herself up in a way so that she doesn't have to take accountability and the, you're right i missed that the first time i watched it but that's basically what's happening because when i watched it i was just like she's not saying anything she's 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 saying she's not going to set goals because goals just happen to her and if they come into her life like a feral cat she'll take care of it then but until then she has no goals or aspirations or wants for the upcoming year and then goes on to talk about how like aimless she feels and how she doesn't know what she's going to do for the upcoming year and it's kind of like that's the point of setting goals but okay a lot of people were pointing out that by not doing that she's also setting herself up to not have to take accountability if she doesn't succeed in things or just in general like if she spends the entire year just floating around aimlessly she doesn't have to take accountability for that with her audience or anything because she never set any hard goals or hard expectations for herself or her channel so yeah so it's kind of like she's setting herself up for a get out of jail free card if she happens to accomplish something then she wants praise and admiration for it if she doesn't accomplish anything well she never set any goals anyway so whatever it's again one of those like it's, it's not even a subtle manipulation it's a manipulation tactic to control the conversation around her channel and her brand now, the number one question I get right now is, how did I start getting active? If you're new here. Is it? Is it though? I don't think that's the number one question you get. Just judging by your comment sections. If you have no clue who I am, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. About, I want to say talk, eight, talk, nine talk. months ago, I decided to start working out. I hate this outfit so much. Also, who puts carpet in a gym? Like, it just dawned on me that this is her gym. And this stair machine, I hate this thing. I hate this thing so much that I'm trying to get up to 15 minutes on it, like, straight. I hate this machine. This machine and I are mortal enemies, and I do battle with it every time I go into the gym. If you guys, if you're not already, like, a svelte bastard, you want to try this thing out. It will work your, it will work you out. This was around the same time I made a oh, lot of other God. changes as far as like what I ate. Uh, I treated a lot of previously untreated medical issues. And I also decided that I was going to try some weight loss medication. Okay. I wanted to talk about this real fast. She kind of glow it. She kind of 
glazes over her surgery. I'm still not entirely positive what surgery she's had because she's been incredibly vague about it. On the one hand, that's annoying. On the other hand, I I don't know if she really needs to tell us because it's not weight loss surgery, so it, it doesn't really matter beyond that point. The drugs, however, the weight loss drugs, this is the first time since her non-apology video where she basically told us it was none of our business that she was taking weight loss drugs um this is the first time since that video or maybe it was a different one but she's openly admitted to taking weight loss drugs the last time she did it she was like I wasn't hiding the fact that I wasn't take I wasn't hiding the fact that I was taking weight loss drugs from you guys. I just wasn't telling you about it. Which is the same thing as hiding it. So basically, she got caught not being open about her weight loss drugs while she was doing her health journey, which is a I'm sorry, that's a no-no. And so now she's just going to very quickly mention it and then move on very fast because she's going to she's just now said, you know, I I was taking the weight loss drugs and then she's going to be like, but that aside, as if it has nothing to do with the amount of weight that she's going to claim that she's lost here. So she's still not. She's she's still even though admitting that she was taking weight loss drugs, I don't know if she still is, but even it even saying that she was she's still not going to attribute any of her weight loss to the drugs does that make sense she's still going to try to like swoop her way out of that one all of those things together basically have transformed my life today we're going to be talking about a very specific part of that journey which is my fitness journey so when i started excuse me about nine months ago i had very little strength in my body um and i moved who works out with their hair down let me know. I don't do it because I hate the feel of my hair on the back of my neck while I'm sweating. But do you, you people with long hair, because I know sometimes guys have long hair too and there are people that don't identify one way or the other. Do you work out with your hair down? Moved very little. And my goal was to simply improve that and be able to do more. I think the hardest thing about being in a bigger body is that you can feel closed off from the world around you. You can feel like certain things are just not accessible to you. Here's another thing. I'm going to be stopping a lot, apparently. Here's another part of fat acceptance haze rhetoric, which does fall into very snugly into my concept of dark anthropology. And that's using different words to describe situations that already have a definition. Anna doesn't exist in a bigger body. Anna's obese. Anna's not just obese. Anna's probably in the morbidly obese category. But instead of saying that, because that sounds bad, she exists in a larger body. And this is something that the fat acceptance people do a lot and the haze people do a lot. I exist in a larger body. No, you're fat. Knock it off. I was on about this in my community tab earlier. Because of this shift in language, George Carlin was on to something. Because of this shift in language, the impact of the concept of being obese has been softened. So um the argument i have been having in my comment section is that i am a size 12 and i love that people want to come on here and tell me that a size 12 is not a plus size but it is and just because you can buy it in the straight size section of most stores these days does not make it not a plus size all right i know my measurements i know what a plus size is and 12 historically has been considered a plus size and the first person to bring up Marilyn Monroe needs to do more research. All right. That being said, because people like Anna here, who's like a size 24, 26, something like that, or at least that's the highest she's ever admitted to be because of people like her constantly softening the language around obesity, we now, we as a culture, now view size 12, which is medically obese, okay? A BMI of, what, 30 or more is medically obese. We now view that as being thin or uh, um, normal-bodied or 
an average weight and it's like yeah okay uh like a size 16 is the average size of the american female but uh that doesn't make it not obese it just means we've all gotten fat so that's the thing with that kind of language that i don't like is it takes away the reality of the situation and kind of softens it in a way that people don't even understand what a plus size is anymore. Like they don't even understand that they might themselves be overweight and or obese. Now, having said that, if that's how you want to live your life, knock yourself out. All right. I just don't feel like people should have this strange illusion to the point where people tell me I don't need to lose weight. I do. My doctor has told me so. Uh, I don't care if you think I'm thin. It's between me and my doctor kind of a situation. And I'm not the only person that has this conversation on a regular basis with people, as people have shared in my comments section. So you can't sit here and tell me that there isn't an impact on the greater society, on our greater society, especially when you step outside of America. And I think Britain, who is quickly catching up with us in the obese department, my size is is difficult to come across in European sizes. I think in a European size, I'm like, I'm like a 16 or an 18, possibly even a European 20. I can't remember the last time I checked. It's, I'm not small, okay? And God help me if I try to buy anything like on an Asian sizing chart, because that ain't happening. I, I size out at even their extra large, I think is a 10. So, or an American 10. It's that kind of thing. The rest of the world understands that this is a plus size. America wants to argue that it's not. Anyway, rant over. And I basically got sick of waiting for the world to make- Okay, it's the outfit. What possessed you to wear that? And I see she put her hair up. But what in God's name- possessed you anyone to wear that make themselves accessible to me and decided instead to work on myself and just get to a point where i didn't feel like things i love to do were just so difficult anymore and no shame no foul to anyone else who decides that that's not the journey for them that's the journey that i chose and i am a very big believer in making the best choices for you whether that's weight loss or choosing not to lose weight those are both valid options but I'm not going to say they're not valid options, but again, this is another part of health acceptance and Hayes rhetoric where they're trying to reshape language around obesity. As an individual, you have a right to do whatever you're legally allowed to do to your body. You are as long as you're a consenting adult. That is that is the end all. That's that's the end of the conversation, really. But to sit here and say that it's just as healthy to be obese and not try to lose weight as it is to be overweight and or obese and attempt to lose weight, that's a false equivalency. It is not the same. We have plenty of studies that show it's not the same, just as we have plenty of studies that show that people who are of a medically normal body size are healthier and will live longer than people of Anna's size, for example, even when Anna is physically active, all right? There's just no comparison. But Fat Acceptance and Hayes wants you to believe, or they want it to be perceived as being true, that the simple act of being active will, will make you just as healthy as someone like Chikara Transformations. You know, compare Anna to Chikara. Anna wants you to believe that she is just as physically capable as Chikara. She can hike, she can swim, she can run, she can lift weights, she can do yoga just as well as Chikara can. Um, and I would like to see that comparison side by side because I think all of us know that's not true. But that's... That's the part where the fat acceptance and the haze rhetoric really starts to like truly bother me because it creates this fantasy that you don't have to do anything to be healthy. You just need to exist. And that's enough. 
look, if you want to look like this, if this is your goal, then that's fine. It really is. Do I want it? No. Would I aim for this? No. That's a personal decision on my end. If that's your decision, there's nothing I can do for you. But if you want to sit here and tell me that Anna's as healthy as I am, I'm going to tell you right now, that's bullshit. But I did choose to lose weight. I did lose around 90 pounds on this journey. And that's with a lot of complications that traditionally make losing weight very difficult. I have Hashimoto's and I also have lipedema. All right. Going back to the amount of weight that she's lost first off, again, bringing up Chikara. Chikara says that, no, she hasn't lost that much weight. She would have had to have, because she remembered at the beginning, she said she started this eight to nine months ago. So we're going to give her nine months. She will have had to have lost 10 pounds a month on average to have lost 90 pounds. And I'm positive I can go back to nine months ago and watch a video of Anna and there's not a huge difference in their in the sizes of nine months ago anna and today anna so sorry my cats are destroying the house as usual um but that's another thing that people have talked about in my comments section and i'm really starting to like listen to it because sometimes sometimes people will look at someone and be like oh, I'm the same size, or oh, I'm I'm bigger, or I'm smaller than the person on the screen. And you're just kind of like eyeballing it. And the camera can do all kinds of amazing things to you, by the way. And this, the angle of the camera can do all kinds of amazing things. Lighting does amazing things, all right? So you really shouldn't try to eyeball yourself with someone on camera and kind of, and try to do a body comparison with them, unless there's some kind of measurement that you can use. Like if I got on here and I measured each part of my body, and told you my measurements then you could be like oh yes i have those same measurements then then we can do the comparison anna routinely comes on here and states that she's much much smaller size wise than she actually is and that has been demonstrated when she's gone shopping for clothing in the past um she's apparently got on here and said that she's as small as a size 20 in some points in her life she's currently claiming that she's a double x or 2xl maybe in some of the plus size stuff that she's buying which is probably vanity size but there's no way that she's like an industry standard xl or 2xl she's admitted to being as high as a 26 to a 28 and she mentioned that when she went to barcelona i think it was when she went to this spain i'm an american i don't do geography um so she has mentioned her larger size before and I've seen people in my comments section, a lot of people in my comments section who say things like, Anna has said she was a 22. I wear a 22 and I was blown away. Or they'll say things like, she says she's a 22 and I wear a larger number than her. And it makes me worry about my body size. First off, you shouldn't be comparing yourself. I will put that out there. Secondly, I know it's very hard not to. And this is where Anna causes problems. Anna gets on here and she says she's a 2XL. And people who are actually 2XLs see Anna and they go, oh shit. And they have, uh, what is it called? Body dysmorphia or uh, body image issues. Or you'll get somebody on here who sees Anna and they go, oh, I'm smaller than Anna. And she's saying, you know, she wears a, a, a 2XL, you know, WTF kind of a thing. Her claiming incorrect sizes or not specifying that, oh, I'm a 2X in this brand, that causes her audience to have problems with their own images. Is that Anna's, is that directly Anna's uh, fault? Probably not. Should Anna be aware that she is affecting her audience in such a way? I would think so, yes. Especially since she's all about, like, body image and cute clothes and plus size this and, you know, health at every size and fat acceptance that. She should be aware of the influence that she is having on her audience. And I think, personally, I think she should be a lot more open about her sizing when she gets something from a brand she shouldn't just say oh i wear a 2xl she should say i wear a 2xl in this brand 
if you are a woman <laughs> and you shop for clothes in the women's section, because guys get their stuff sized differently, you understand that you can be a size 12 in Levi jeans and that same 12, that same circumference, waist circumference in those pants is going to be like a size 16 over here in some other brand and a size 10 somewhere else because we have stupid sizings. It's, but if I were to, if I were to do a haul and I were to hold up clothing and I were to hold up the Levi's jeans, I would say in a Levi's, I'm wearing a size 12, you know, in these, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of my actual pants in these LL Bean pants that I bought at Goodwill. Uh, these are a size, well, they're, they're also a size 12, but my point would be, Seven. but my point would be is that I would tell you the brand and also the size, because that's important. Anna just gets up here and says, oh, I'm teeny tiny. I'm a petite little girl. And it's just like, dude, you're not, though. You've admitted it, and we can tell you're not. Anyway, I know I'm ranting way too much for this video. One of the things that's been kind of critical in this, like, journey for me was finding a fitness routine that actually worked. And I'm actually partnering with the solution that I found as part of this video. I know that that can feel a little sus when people are like, it's my partner. And then they just like start using that thing that day. But that is not my story. I have used this tool, really it's a tool, very successfully over the past year. And it has literally transformed my life. And what I'm talking about is Copilot. Now, what is Copilot? Is it an app? I'm not a Copilot person. I'm not a Copilot fan. I don't think you should be using Copilot unless you already know how to do most of these exercises correctly. Or if you're going to use Copilot, that you should find someone in real life who can help you with your form because Anna is a perfect example as to why this kind of stuff is probably not the best option because her form is absolute crap. And it has been from the day that she started. Uh, and that has been confirmed by numerous people that do um, <clears throat> uh, personal training and, and just people with eyeballs. Um, and there's an interesting part in here coming up. App, is it a physical trainer? Well, it's kind of both, right? It is technology assisted by an actual- Watch the speed that these people, the little demonstrations here, Watch the speed that they're doing the exercise at, and then watch the speed that she's doing at. Even though I have sped up this video, the time, the difference in the speed is significant. And that's actually important for form. ...human to design a workout routine that works best for you. And why this specifically has worked so amazingly for me is that it met me where I was at. And since I'm partnering with Copilot today, they're being super awesome. They're gonna give you guys a 14 day free trial and 20% off your first month. This is the best deal that I've ever been. She is awesome. Under Copilot, this was in mid-March of last year. As you can see, so I'm showing you right now, this is my, me where I was when I, you can look at the video I'm showing you right now. This is my literal day one workout with Copilot. This was in mid-March of last year. As you can see, I'm pretty weak. Um, I'm struggling to do a lot of these. She's also doing the workout in the middle of the hallway. Like I found that strange exercises and honestly it was a very humbling experience my first workout i realized that uh i wasn't where i wanted to be or even where i thought i was but i did feel like i was empowered and had something that would help me now i stuck with it i've worked out about three times a week with copilot since then and actually they do like a little end of year wrap up for copilot and i just want to show you mine so you can see literally what i did last year and what it took to what a weird place to exercise in the middle of the pool to lose 90 pounds and honestly, dramatically and completely transform my mobility, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so last year, the first thing I got, and this is like, they do like their own version of the Spotify wrapped. It's like the- I, uh, Beatrice Caruso, who I adore and I watch, also does co-pilot and I, I think the same thing about her, but uh, Beatrice has also talked about having her form corrected in the past because she knows she's was she was doing things incorrectly. So she has sought out ways to have her form corrected that kind of a thing um anna has never mentioned that ever of course she that would require anna to be a whole lot more open and transparent than she is um but beatrice also did her like year wrap-up thing um here's the thing anna's about to give us a bunch of numbers that don't mean anything and they don't mean anything because this is the app tracking it doesn't necessarily mean that Anna literally did these things, okay? 
I have a fitness app that I use when I go to the gym. It's part of my, it, it's the same thing I use to track all my calories and stuff. It's the Samsung health app. Um, I go in and I push a little button that says uh, weight machines. And it basically just keeps track of how much time I'm on the weight machines. And then it'll give me a little calorie thing. Like it'll be like, you've burned 250 calories in your workout. Did I though? Did I? Like, you know, the machine, that the app doesn't know how many reps I did. It doesn't know what weight I was using. It doesn't know if I was struggling or not. It doesn't know if the weight was too light. It doesn't know anything about the actual workout. It just knows that I pushed the button 20 minutes ago and then I'm turning it off now. Kind of a situation. It was like when I'm, I'm trying to do a 5K thing purely because Anna says she's doing it. And then Amberlynn also made a comment about it. I'm not actually going to run a 5K, but I'm going to train for it. Um, But I had it track me on the treadmill. And I ran, what was it, 10 minutes? Ran. I did the off-on thing. You know, you run for a minute, you walk for a minute, you run for a minute, you walk for a minute on the treadmill. The, the app doesn't know how fast I was going. It doesn't know what incline I'm at. It doesn't know any of that. It just knows that I was on the treadmill for around 11 minutes because it took me some time to push the button on and push the button off after I was done running. So even the time on the treadmill is not accurate. Anna's going to give us all of these numbers and then be really impressed with herself because of these numbers, but it doesn't mean anything. We've seen Anna work out, okay? She's, she's documented many of her workouts. So we know how hard she works out and we know how well she does the workout and we know what weights she's using. The app doesn't. The co-pilot end of your wrap. So I did 166 workouts with co-pilot last year or this. Well, yeah, last year. And so I just did the math rounding down uh, because it's under five. Anna did 18 workouts on average a month over nine months um so that's slightly more than half of the month working out i just want to have that number out there whether it's good or bad is another story i don't care honestly i just wanted to know what that broke down to and i was just wondering if anybody else wanted to know too i lifted 447 thousand pounds well 447 317 pounds to be specific i worked out for 5952 minutes and i talked to my coach 503 unless my math is incredibly wrong which my phone did it so i blame it she over nine months worked out 100 hours so she's doing roughly 18 workouts a month and each workout's roughly 30 minutes. Okay. Three times. <laughs> also, why is she lifting weight? I'm not trying to be a dick, but she's heavy enough. She's her own weight. Why is she adding weight to her joints? That makes no sense to me. Like... She could literally just do dumbbell curls with nothing in her hand or just a bar so she has something to hold on to and she's going to get enough resistance there for a while. I don't know. I talk too much. This is very clear. And honestly, my workout persona was the mobility master. On top of all of this, I feel like these are just numbers, right? These are just to show you like how much I committed to this. But on top of all of this, I feel like I have a lot of things back in my life. So when I started the journey, here's some things I could not do. I could not do a lunge at all. I could not do a bridge at all. I could not do um, dead bugs for more than one set. And these are all activities and motions that are now in my warm up and are very comfortable for me. I'm actually doing some of them weighted, weighted lunges, weighted pelvic lifts, all kinds of things. I've gained the ability to do a push up. I've gained the ability to do an inchworm. And Somebody in my comment section was like, where does she claim she can do a push up? Right there. Right there. She claimed to do a push up. I granted the video shows her doing a uh, basically a wall push up, but she does straight up claim she can do a push up. The literal video before this, she says, I still can't do a push up. Okay. And I've also gained the ability to just lift heavier and stronger weights. We can talk about all. But why? 
Also, if your goal is mobility, why are you... I don't know. Wait, I've listed, and I think we've talked about that in other videos where I've discussed Copilot, but I think... What the hell is that? Discuss Copilot? What is that? Who, who talks like that? That's weird. Sorry, that was weird. I don't, I don't understand that. You know what? She looks really good in this picture. We should take that picture and save it. I'm not being a dick. I think she looks nice in that picture. What's even more exciting is my stamina. It used to be I would work out and then I would be exhausted, like broken. I would just like fall over on the couch and be like, the day is done. I am broken. But now I feel like I have the energy to like go forward, go on and just like live a normal day. But I also already worked out. That did take time. I say this all the time online and I will say it again in this video. Consistency is key. And that's what Copilot really helped me with is having someone I was accountable to, making it easy because I knew what I needed and just showed up. I didn't have to think about like, am I doing the right things? Am I pushing too hard? I just needed to communicate. What? This is what I'm talking about with her form. I'm sure she's doing something that is an actual exercise, but what is she doing? That's so weird. And why is she working out in the kitchen section? How these movements felt and Olivia worked with me to adapt them and make them work for my body. Now I could she does them way too fast and she does she either overextends the motion or she doesn't follow through completely with the motion. It's very one or the other. She very rarely actually does the motion correctly. And again, that's been pointed out by people who actually do physical training. Just tell you about how amazing Copilot is. And I really, I really do believe that it's a great body neutral space that really has made me feel empowered in my body, which I think is really important. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to show you a little montage because we love a montage here at Glitter and Lasers Do of we? where I started. So basically today, today's workout and you can. She's done one of these before. I want to say, what was she saying? It was like 300 workouts or something like that. Um, yeah, these numbers don't make sense. Her numbers don't make sense. One was like 300 workouts later or something like that. And she was trying to show that her form had improved and it really hadn't. Um, so, uh, you know. But if she did 300 workouts in that video and it can't be older than nine months, how is she, is she only counting the 100 strength workouts? But she hasn't even done 300 workouts. I'm so confused. I'm going to have to dig that video up. You can kind of see the progress I made by just being consistent and really having a partner in this journey, which Copilot was. Also, Copilot's affordable, much more affordable than a trainer. And again, I could talk for hours about why I love it. Copilot is not more affordable than a trainer. It's it, it's a scam. I'm sorry. Uh, my trainer, if I choose to have one, is through my gym that I already pay for. It's part of my gym. Um, and I guarantee you... If I were to take on a trainer from my gym full time and have an actual person there training me, um, it would be cheaper than Copilot. Because I really do. Now, that's going through my gym. That's not me personally going and tracking down a personal trainer, like a celebrity trainer or, you know, Michelle McDaniels or paying for Chikara Transformations one on ones, which even those are cheaper than Copilot. Uh, and you get to have you get to have Chikara tell you what to do. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, montage away. I get that these are the befores, but look at how fast she does these movements. She's going too fast and she's going too fast because she wants to get it over with. She's more concerned about saying, I did X number of Y than she is about saying, my form is good and I'm not going to injure myself doing this. I still don't understand what the fuck that was supposed to be. She just goes too fast and because she goes too fast she overextends and when you overextend especially doing something that is already challenging for you physically you run the risk of hurting yourself 
and my back would be one of the last parts of my body I would want to injure in any way, shape, or form. I've already had my back seize up once, and that was enough. Let me tell you what, you know you're old <laughs> when your back just decides to seize up for no apparent reason. It hurts. I would not want to permanently damage my back. I wouldn't even want to risk permanently damaging my back. She's doing these so fast, she's clunking herself in the head. Not with the weight, with her arm, thankfully, but she's doing these so fast. She's just bopping herself in the head every time she goes around her head. She doesn't have the weight in the right plot in the right spot for this. Why is she even doing it weighted? And she's still going too fast. And I don't think she has her. Yeah, she's got she's supporting herself on her neck, not on her actual shoulders. Like one little caveat I will make that made it easier for me to work out, and it definitely improved my consistency when I did this, is I decided to work out at home. That way it took the pressure of the gym away. And I did buy a bench and some weights. I've linked them down below, no pressure, but they've been great for me. And the bench does hold up to 800 pounds. So if you're like not sure what like fitness gear to start out with, that's what worked for me but literally no pressure. Just trying to make it simpler if you're looking for solutions for that and a way to like not have to work out in public because honestly, it's not for me. <laughs> That's one of the few things I'll agree with her with. If you don't feel comfortable working out in public, there's a lot of things you can do at home by yourself. There's a lot of equipment you can buy to work out by yourself. You don't have to buy a bench and weights. If you want to buy a bench and weights, that's fine. It, there's nothing wrong with that. I used to have my own private bench and weights and I never used the damn things, so I got rid of them. And now I own a set of stretch bands and stuff and I use those way more frequently than I ever used the barbells and the dumbbells. It's just It just matters what you feel comfortable doing. I also don't have a problem working out in public because I don't give a shit. <laughs> I go to the gym to work out. If I make awkward eye contact with somebody at the gym, I look away ashamed and I continue working out. I mean, that's just what it is. <laughs> it's not for me. As a little reminder, if you want to try out Copilot for yourself, if you think it might be a good solution for you, listen, I could not recommend it more. If you see me working out, and don't ask me where I got my workout because it's from Copilot. It's always from Copilot. <laughs> you can check them out and get a free... If I saw someone like Anna in real time working out in public which apparently I would never see anyway, but I'm going to cut out the rest of this because it's just the ad. Um, I would not walk up to them and ask them where they got their workout from because I would not be impressed enough to think, oh, wow, I should do that because that looks like you're just flailing. It's like I decided to go to the gym today and now I'm just going to flail my way through a workout which a lot of people do when they first start working out. They have no idea what they're doing. They just show up to the gym. They're like, that machine. And then they just they just go whole hog on it. They don't have any physical goal. Like, they don't have any, like, improvement goals. They're not like, I want to build my chest or I want to build my butt or, you know, I want to walk up nine flights of stairs on the, the evil step machine. They don't have those goals. And it's very common. And so, like, if that's you, don't feel bad. <laughs> Everybody does that. I did that. When I started going to the gym way back in 2022, way back in the day, um, I'm not kidding you. I went in and I was like, I'm going to go walk on the treadmill for at least 15 minutes. I'm going to, what was it? I, I saw it on uh, Beatrice. She did this. It was, um, I forget what it's called, but basically you set the, you basically get on the treadmill. You're supposed to walk for 30 minutes. I, I, I did work, walk for 30 minutes, but I had to like convince myself to go do 15. I'm like, if I do 15, then it's fine. Anyway, you get in there, you set the treadmill to like, what is it? Like a 12% incline, something like that. And then you're supposed to walk at a two and a half to three pace. I think it's, I think those are supposed to be miles. That's what I did when I first started going to the gym though. I, I went in. I got on the first tread machine that was outside the door when I got out of the changing room. I set it to six and a half to 12, depending on how challenged I felt that day. I set it to two and a half to five, or two and a half to three as far as speed. And I just walked for 15 to 20, 15 to 30 minutes. 
my point is is like do what you got to do to get to the gym and don't feel bad about it if like all you do is go in and walk for five minutes on the treadmill you know if all you do is go in and walk around the the the, the gym you don't even do anything you just go in and you're just like do, 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 and then you leave at least you showed up you know that's the first step if that's all you're doing a year from now you, you might want to reevaluate what you're doing but there's nothing wrong with working out at the gym i don't understand I get being uncomfortable. I really do. And I get feeling like everybody's staring at you. I really get that too. But just don't worry about it. If people are looking at you, they're either not actually looking at you and they're just staring off into space. Or once they realize they're looking at you, they're going to look away. And if you do have to deal with that one asshole that's going to come up and tell you how to correct your form and they're not an employee and you didn't ask for the information, just look at them and be like, go away. Away. Anyway. That was an hour of my life. If you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave a little workout person down in the comment section. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the video. Let me know what you guys think about Copilot. Do any of you use Copilot? You know, I maybe there's somebody who's using... It's like when I did Weight Watchers. There, there are some people that did Weight Watchers and still do that love it. And it works for them. So are you somebody that uses Copilot? Does it work for you? Let me know down in the comment section. Um, I would never use it, but I pay for a gym membership. I'm not going to also pay for an app. I really can't think of what else to say that I didn't say during the video. I know I rambled a lot there at the beginning because I was talking about the dark anthropology and all of that stuff. But I don't really have anything else left to say, so don't forget to leave your emoji. Don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to thumbs up the video if this is your first video hi nice to meet you if it's your second video you might as well subscribe uh, if it's your first video go ahead and subscribe i dare you make that your 2024 resolution and yeah i will see everybody in the next one i will see everybody then bye